start, if I could get everybody's attention, please. Um, first and uh, foremost, if, if I could just get you to turn your phones off, really tune into the conversation that we're going to have here. This experience is, uh, I have to tell you, it's the, probably the thing I dread most in a school year every year, but it's also the most important thing that I do. Um, I can't do this situation without thinking of my own children. So, first and foremost, I want to thank you for making the effort to come in on a Friday morning when you didn't have school um, to share this experience with us. Um, thank all of the people that are here. There's a lot of people that we need to thank, and I'll do that again um, after the simulation. I just want to talk about framing why we're here, why we do this. Unfortunately, you know, at, your, at this point in your life, it's probably hard for you to think that anything really bad could happen to you. But we did this simulation at Mansfield Hill, which has profound meaning for our community. And we've lost students before in tragic accidents. We have this history. And with all of these amazing events that we've fought so hard for you to have over the next couple of weeks, the junior prom tonight, next week, the senior ball, the bash, and graduation. There's also all of the parties that go along with that. We want so much for you to have those rites of passage, and to have those opportunities to, to celebrate all your accomplishments and to say goodbye to one another before you head off in this next path in your life. But it only takes one more decision to forever profoundly impact your life and every part of your family and those around you, your friends, your extended family, etc. And again, we can't act like this doesn't happen here. It happens here all the time. And all of these training professionals deal with this on a regular basis. So I want to ask you again to, to really think about why you're here and why we take the effort to, you know, put all of this together for you and to make sure that you have the opportunity in a safe way to understand how one very small decision could profoundly impact everyone around you and you will no longer be here. My, I'm, I'm finally old enough to have a daughter that went to a junior prom. I have to tell you, it was one of the best and worst nights of my life just a couple of weeks ago because the entire time she was out, I could not sit still until she got home safely. And every year as the principal, I have to tell you it's my worst fear, is to get a call in the middle of the night from one of these police officers and tell me that I've lost a student. So please tune in to my pitch. If you need anything, um, some self-care, we have an amazing mental staff here. And please seek out that help. We can start with the 911 call, please. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is this just three of you? And then we'll focus on productivity. Alright, can you get out? No, it's hurting. Okay, then sit tight. You ain't going to go to the house. I'm going to go talk to you tonight. I don't think it's bad. I'm going to go to the house. And it's hurting. Just sit right there. Five minutes on our you let a uh, player know that we have one unconscious, unconscious female and uh, two with probably severe injuries. What do you got? I'm Okay. I'm going to lose my Okay. I'm going to sit tight with this driver and take care of the other injuries. Alright, go get out. Stay right there. Stay right there. Where are you coming from? Party. Where was that? I don't know. Is this your car? She's... Yeah. What's your first name? What? Hey. Okay. Is this your car? Yeah. I'm going to shut up Shots. Shots what? Is that it? Yeah, how long ago? A few hours ago. You know what happened? No. You know you're in an accident right now? Uh, yeah. Okay. Are you injured? Um, not really. Yeah. What? Not really. I, I seem to be alright. Get him out, yeah. I'm gonna get out from the other side. Alright. She stopped breathing. Alright. Uh, no injuries? I don't think so. You're gonna be alright, man. You sure? I don't think
this line in front of you. I want you to put your left foot on that line. Hold your right foot to your left foot. Don't start shooting this way. Not side to your side. Don't start yet. Left, left foot on the line. Right foot on your right foot. Like this. Like me. Right. I'm not to your side. Stay in that position. I don't let you move. Understand? From that position. Get the nine step, do the small step, take nine steps back, you'll be low again on that line. Three, up to nine. During the test, make sure you keep looking down your feet, do not stop the test, make sure you slowly step, and make sure you start. Go ahead and begin.
decided to drink and drive today. Maybe he thought he didn't have to drink. Cause all of this. This might look like a simulation to a lot of people, but this is pretty real. And it could be actually a lot worse than what you're looking at in real life. I have one female, one of his close friends, who actually passed away in the accident. And many of his other friends have really bad injuries that they have to live with for the rest of their life. He got arrested, and he's probably going to go to prison for maybe over 10 years which is going to affect his life and his family's life forever. Same thing with the person who was deceased. She has family members who have to deal with for the rest of their lives. So the point of this is, first of all, you should not be drinking and driving. And a lot of people think they maybe had a little bit, a little bit to drink and they're not drunk, when in reality, your judgment could be altered by only having one or two drinks, and you can cause this. So the best thing to do is, first of all, don't be drinking. And if when you're older, over 21, and you, you did drink, you should probably get somebody to give you a ride. You should never operate a motorcycle or a car under any circumstances if you have alcohol in your system. Why? 
and now the pain is cutting me like a hundred stabbing knives. Tell sister not to be afraid, mom. Tell dad to be brave. And when I go to heaven, put I love you on my grave. Someone should have taught her that it's wrong to drink and drive. If only they had told her, mom, then I would still be alive. My breath is getting shorter, mom. I'm getting really scared. These are my final moments, and I'm so unprepared. I wish that you could hold me, mom, as I lie here and die. I wish that I could say, I love you, mom. So I love you, and goodbye. As I was saying before, I wish that this was something I could promise you would never happen, but I can. I always have to take a minute after that moment because that destroys the truth. Please, when you're out, make healthy decisions. If you think you're in danger, call for help. We will all reserve judgment. We just want you home safe. It's not worth it. It's not worth it for you. It's not worth it for your families, your friends, and in this case, someone maybe you don't even know. Again, I don't go through this ceremony or this uh, simulation to scare you. This happens all the time. And as you see, the EMS staff here, the airport police, the Monroe County Sheriff, Mercy Flight, Egypt Fire Department, you see how amazingly skilled they are at their job, and that's because they have way too much experience doing it. Incredibly thankful for them to be here today. Thank you for them for donating your time, your talents to help send a message. The students, I know not everyone was able to make it today. I'm going to share this video with all that you're here to see your families. So please tell your friends to watch it with your families. And please, 